Well, we're going live on Instagram, and we are praising the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and we are studying the book of Samuel. We're in 1 Samuel. We're in chapter 27. So welcome, loved ones, as you come in, and uh, we'll get together and uh, praise one name. One name, not your name, not my name, but the name of Jesus Christ. That's it. That's what we got. That's what... That's how we're going to roll from now on. It's just with Jesus, the world's kind of like, come, come, do this, bow the knee, uh, you know, say it like this, oh, oh, don't offend me, on and on and on. Uh, we bow the knee to Jesus. That's it. Jesus alone, no other name. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. All right, well, greetings from Uganda and greetings from Fresno and greetings from Southern Cali and greetings from all over the world. Hello, let me know where you're coming from. God's blessings upon blessings upon blessings on all of you. So we're in um, chapter 28 of 1 Samuel, or chapter 27, I should say, 1 Samuel. And David is kind of tired. He's sick and tired, sick and sick and tired of running. And Saul's been chasing him, the first king of Israel. Hello, everybody. Blessings, blessings. Blessings. We even got Canada joining in, Orlando, Florida joining in. It's so good to have you wonderful, beautiful people. Sun Valley, California joining in. Tell me, tell me, tell me. All right. Blessings from, um, I believe that's Louisiana. And uh, hello from Toronto, Canada. Wow, that's a beautiful place. I don't know if y'all have ever visited Toronto, but oh my goodness, just a gorgeous place. Uh, CN Tower and everything like that. Okay. And Carlsbad, California. How do you do? I hope y'all are doing well. Blessings upon all of you. Okay, loved ones. So we're we're kind of uh, um, New Jersey. Hello, New Jersey. How are you, New Jersey? You guys are probably cold weather. Port of Ranch, California. Raj, hello. That's near to where I am. Northridge, California. Hello. Well, well, Southern California is showing up, lighting up. All right. Blessings. I don't know if you've ever gotten to a point in your life where you're like, I'm done. I want to quit. I'm tired. I can't do this anymore. It's too much for me to bear. Hello, Downey. Uh, too much for me to bear. I can't do it. And so that's where David is. I mean, I can't, if you can just imagine Santa Clarita, really close. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't know. Have you ever been there? Like David has been on, like you read like, okay, it's big deal. 10 chapters. No, it ain't 10 chapters from chapter 17 onward to 27. It's 10 years. Hello, Missouri, San Fernando, California. How you doing? All of you blessings. You guys are all blessings. Uh, okay. So check it out. 10 years. I mean, he's being chased like an animal. Wow, Washington, Newport, hello, 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 hello. Um, okay, so look, I mean, he's being chased, right? Can you stand that? I mean, you, you don't even get a break. And where do you get to stay? Hilton Hotel? I don't think so. He's in caves. He's going from cave to cave. He just can't. Uh, it's very difficult. The, the, the uh, amazing thing is he's got 600 men following him with their families, by the way. It's just not 600 men. It's uh, 600 men plus their families. So they're all following him. So he's not one man alone. But he it's not easy for him to fight against 3,000 of his of soldiers. Saul's elite soldiers, right? Uh, this is ridiculous. Saul has many more soldiers than 3,000, but he usually brings 3,000 elite soldiers to take David out. I can't, he can't do this anymore. It's like, I, I can't, my life is over. You, I, did I ask to be anointed with oil so I could become king? I didn't ask for that. Did I ask to go and kill Goliath? I just showed up. He was there. He was cursing God. And I thought, uh, no, you don't. I'm going to take you out. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring you Big boy stature down to the ground. That's what David said in a sense. You're talking about my God. You're talking about my God. Oh, if somebody talking about your God today, you'd be like, oh, <laughs> you'd be laughing. Or will you be saying, oh, no, I'm sorry. It stops right there. We, that's my God. That's my Jesus. That's my Savior. That's my Lord. Yeah, I hope that's you. I hope that's me. We're like, no apologies. I'm sorry. That's my God you're talking about. Uh-uh. So David was like that. And then he didn't ask for that. 
He didn't ask to be placed in a palace. He didn't ask to play the, his little harp for, for Saul when Saul, Saul went all loco on us. No, he didn't. He wasn't asked for, he didn't chase any of that. He didn't chase the kingdom. So now he's being chased because God anointed him. Which goes to show you life is going to be difficult at times. And and even John in Revelation chapter 1, he's like, you're my brothers and sisters in Christ, but you are also my brothers and sisters in suffering. I mean, it's there, it's plain, and if you don't know it, well, life will show it. You feel me? It'll show it. Uh huh. Okay, so now we've got we've got David on the loose. He decides to go to the land of Philistines without asking God. Mistake. And he don't ask God. And Saul uh, and and he's like, okay, well then, uh, Saul. When Saul hears about it, he'll he'll be he'll be so disappointed. He'll he'll despair. No, he won't. He'll be celebrating good times. Come on. And then David arose, and in verse two, and we're in First Samuel twenty-seven two. And David arose, and he passed over with six hundred men that were with him to Achish, the son of Maok, king of Gath. Okay. So what I want to first say is that when you sin and I sin. When we sin, we drag a lot of people with us. Loved one, did you just hear me? When we sin, we drag others with us. Uh, you ain't alone, okay? You're just not alone. I'm not alone. When we decide to do stupid and we decide to give Satan a foothold, we ain't alone. We're going to drag other people with us. That's not a good thing. So David's dragging 600 men and plus their families with him. And David dwelled in Achish and at Gath. So he's on the, he's on like the, the West Coast where today's, by the way, today Gaza Strip is, right? You know, you've heard of Gaza Strip because Israel at war with, um, uh, number one, Hezbollah on top. And also the, he's, uh, Israel's at war with, um, with the peoples, not with the peoples of Palestine, but with the people who try to tear them down. So anyway, he's, uh, that's, that's Hamas tried to destroy innocent people. And that's when, uh, Israel had to fight back. So that's where we're talking about where Hamas is, was today at the Gaza Strip. That's a, uh, around that place. Okay. It's on the, uh, it's on the West Coast. Uh, right where the Mediterranean Sea is of Israel. So that's where we're at. So that's where he's going. He's uh, with Achish. And he's dragged all these people with him. And David dwelled with Achish and Gath. And he and his men, every man with his household. Even David with his two wives. He had two wives now. Oh, he'll have more. And then you wonder, why did Solomon have a thousand women? He looked at his daddy. Parents been teaching children. They don't even have to speak. They can just do, and children will do what their parents do in a multiplied way. And that's why I believe Solomon just like, oh, okay, you have 10, I got a 1,000. So here we go. Um, David had his two wives. Uh, um, one of them was Ahionim, the Jezreelitess, and the other one was Abigail. Remember Nabal, the fool? Uh, that was Abigail. That was um, Nabal. That was Nabal's wife. And so he's got two wives, the uh, Carmelites. And then in verse 4, and it was told, told to Saul that David was fled to Gath. So Saul just hears about it because he has all these secret service people checking him out. And he brought and he sought no more again for him. Oh, Saul stopped chasing David. Now, here we go. And the question is, does sin have its benefits? And I'm going to answer this carefully. Yes, it has its benefits temporarily. And it will lead to more disaster than you and I think. So sin has its benefits here for David because he's like, what? I just went to Achish. I just went to Philistines. I went to the land of uh, Philistines in Gath. And I don't have my adversary chasing me anymore. But I'm in sin. But my benefit is... I ain't got to go from cave to cave. Y'all see that? All of a sudden, sin shows its ugly face with its ugly benefits. And the person in sin, whether it be you or I or David, we're thinking, oh, this is good. No, it ain't. So he's like, whoa, Saul's not chasing me. I'm so happy. 
And in verse 5, and David said to Achish, I have, if I have now found favor in your eyes, let them give me a place in some town in the country that I may dwell there. For why should your servant dwell in the royal city with you? He's telling Achish the king, hey, if I found favor in your eyes, is that how you talk to your adversary, David? I don't think so. Is that how he talked to Goli uh, Goliath in, in 17? No, he did not. He said, this day. Yeah. He didn't say tomorrow. He said, this day will the Lord deliver you into my hand when he was talking to Goliath. And I will smite you. And I'll take your head from you. And I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day to the fowls of the air. That's how he talked to Goliath. Uh-huh. That's how he talked to Goliath. He said to him, you come to me with a sword. And you come to me with your spear. Yeah. You come to me with your shield. I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, Jehovah Sabaoth, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. That's how he talked to Goliath. And now to the same Philistine peoples, he's bowing the knee to the enemy. And he's like, if I found favor in your sight, the only person you got to find favor is Jesus Christ. Go to him, loved one. Find favor in his sight. Yeah. He's talking to the wrong man. He's in the wrong place. And he did not consult with his Lord. Not found grace in your sight. Give me a city away from this metropolitan area. I'll take it. Then Achish gave him Ziglag. That day, wherever Ziglag uh, pertains to the kings of Judah to this day. And in verse 7, And the time of David dwelled in the country of the Philistines was a full year and four months. Sixteen months. Sixteen months he stayed there. Sixteen, one, six months. Oh my. Do you know how many psalms? He wrote during the 16 months? Yes. I'm going to help you. Zero. Mm. There may be benefits of sin. It looks like it, right? He's not chasing me. But he wrote no psalms. He might have become a, a better musician when he was there. I don't know, maybe he stopped at the rock and roll store in Ziglag or in Gath. And he's like, ooh, I like me that guitar. I'm going to have some. And so, I don't know. But, um, I, I mean, I'm not sure. I just do, do know one thing. He wrote no song. Almost like losing your soul. Man, sin. Sin breaks the communication with God. Then Achish gave him Ziglag in verse 7. And the time David dwelt in the country of the Philistines was a full year and four months. In verse 7. So we got a 16 month uh, period. And then David and his men went up and evaded uh, the Geshurites and the Gezrites and the Amalekites, for those nations were of old of inhabitants of the land, as you go to Shur, even to the land of Egypt. David went everywhere. He was like abandoned. And next uh, next week, we'll find out what he did with the inhabitants of this land. He didn't say, how you doing? Just coming to visit. Yeah. Love you all. No, no. He came as abandoned. Now, look at what he's done. He's lost his song. He's lost his soul. He's lost his way. He's lost his communication with God. And now he's become abandoned. Now, when he was fighting for Israel, he was fighting for the territory of Israel, and he was doing right because that's how people went to war. But now he's abandoned, going to quote-unquote innocent places where they're not bothering him, they're not attacking him, they're not the ones attacking Israel at this time, but he's taking them out. That's what sin does. So let's find out what sin does. Where do we go to find out? Well, we're going to go to, you can go to, Genesis chapter 3 to find out. I mean, when, when Adam and Eve 
own the whole world, biggest real estate deal in the world, and then they sinned because of the apple or the fruit, whatever it may have been, we'll just call it an apple, looked so juicy, looked so good, looked so right, the time was right, and if it feels so good, well then it got to be so right, and then that's what they did, even Adam, Adam and Eve, and they lost the Garden of Eden. They were thrown out. And they died right there. What died right there? They lived to be 900 something. So was the Bible wrong where it says, when you eat of the fruit, you shall die? No, they're spiritually died right then. Their spirit died. Their soul gradually declined. But, and their body ultimately died 900 years later. That's what sin does. And then, so that's Genesis. I, I went to... Uh, the Genesis in the Old Testament for you, but I'm going to go to the New Testament as well, and I'm going to go, obviously, we can think about Romans 6.23, I was just thinking about that, uh, for the wages of sin is death, it leads to death, and we're not just talking about, oh, um, it's just physical death, it's, it's eternal death, without Jesus Christ, there is eternal hell, uh, the only way to get to heaven and to bypass hell is through Jesus Christ, there are many, 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 many ways to get to hell, but there's only one way to get to heaven, mm -hmm. yeah, it's true, it's what the Bible teaches us, we ain't condemning nobody, we're just giving you the bad news, then we're giving you the good news. Bad news, we all have sinned. I don't care who you are, Armenian, African, American, Australian, it don't matter. You sin, I sin, we're going to hell. But that is, all of us have sinned, all of us have fallen short of the glory of God. But there is a gift. Yeah, there's, that's our wages, death, hell. But there is a gift. That's the good news now. The gift is Jesus Christ. He died for you. He suffered for you. He gave his life for you. He loves you. I don't care what you did, who you are, where you came from. It don't matter. What matters is you come to the cross and take the blood of Jesus Christ and say, Be gone, Satan. Get out of my life. I am walking with Christ from henceforth. Amen. My sins are gone. My sins are thrown into the depths of the sea. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. We're going to Galatians chapter 5. And we talk about sin here. He talks, uh, uh, Paul talks to the Galatians about sin. And he says, but if, uh, in verse 19, now the works of the flesh, this is sin, are manifest. Uh, they're going to show up. Which are, uh, which, what are they? They're adultery. Uh, it's not a fling. It's called adultery. Fornication, uncleanness, sensuality. He's talking about sexual sins here. Now, and then in verse 20, it's idolatry. We're in Galatians 5.20 now. Idolatry, witchcraft. Witchcraft is becoming really big. And God is putting it in along with adultery, along with idolatry. And he's saying, this is a sin. This is what gets people to go to hell, basically, and witchcraft and hatred, even hatred in the heart. If you hate somebody, I have some people that tell me they hate a, a politician. Well, you can dislike somebody, but hatred, that's pretty heavy, y'all. Hatred and, and then discord and jealousy and wrath and strife and dissensions and heresies and envyings and murderers and drunkenness and revelings and such like of that which I tell you before as I have also told you in the time past that they which do such things this is their lifestyle uh, not just I touched it once or whatever this is a lifestyle this is an ongoing thing this is what they've decided this is what they're going to do shall not inherit the kingdom of God well can someone that committed adultery inherit the kingdom of God absolutely because if we confess our sins we he is faithful Jesus is faithful to forgive us our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness absolutely Absolutely. Absolutely. When we sin, we need to know Galatians chapter 6, 7. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For who or whatsoever a man sows, whatsoever you sow, whatsoever I sow, that shall he also reap. So whatever we sow, that's what we're going to reap. 
I mean, don't be mocked. Don't be, don't be foolish. He's saying, don't, don't you go to La La Land and go, it's so, it's okay. I'm going to the land of Gath. I'm going to the Philistines now. I'm going to do what I got to do. And I'm seeing the benefits of sin. Okay. You may see the benefits of sin and the pleasures of sin. You and I may see it right then and there. But whatever we sow is going to, number one, come later. Number two, it's going to be multiplied. And number three is going to be much, much bigger. Oh, later, bigger, and much more. That's what's going to happen. Now, the good news is how do we combat this, right? So, okay, we see it. We see what's going to happen. And we're like, oh my gosh, okay, am I damned? Is this it? No, 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 no. So we still stay in Galatians, in Galatians chapter 5, and go to 15 or 16. It says, this I say then, walk in the Spirit. How do we overcome? We walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lust against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that you cannot do the things that you would. So go with the Spirit, loved one. Walk in the Spirit, loved one. The Spirit of God, if you are born again, if you have Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, and if you don't, right now is your time to, to, to come to Him as you are and say, I... I I'm messed up. I, I didn't, had no idea I was messed up, but I'm messed up. And ain't nobody in church talking about sin no more. They're talking about how can you be, how can you be better? How can you achieve more on this earth? Okay, that's good, right? I mean, the world can give you good. Psychology can give you good. But the pastor, the preacher needs to give it to you straight. We giving it to you straight. We're talking about what people don't want to talk about because that offends me. If it offends you, that's the bad news. You open up your ears and listen to the good news. The good news is Jesus loves you. The good news is Jesus cares for you. The good news is Jesus died for you. The good news is Jesus wants you. The good news is Jesus wants, you give peace, that wants to give you peace that you don't have. The good news is Jesus wants to give you joy. That no serotonin can give to you, loved one. That's the good news, baby. So don't be offended, but check it out and say, Oh, I'm, uh, I heard the bad news, but now I want the good news. Good news. We got not serotonin. We got Jesus Christ. We don't have dopamine. We got the Savior of the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, you don't know, you come as you are. And you're like, oh, here's one messed up soul, Lord. I come as I am, Lord. Dr. Sam said, you take me as I am, Lord. I don't have to wash myself with ivory soap or Irish uh, springs, Lord. You wash me with your blood, Lord. I take it right now. I accept I'm a sinner. I accept you're my savior. I come as I am and I know you're going to cleanse me and I got to walk by the spirit. And the Holy Spirit will come into you and teach you and love you and, and he will uplift you. He won't spank you. God spanked his son so the Holy Spirit can love you. Oh, God spanked his son on the cross and, and let him die so that the Holy Spirit can love on you. Don't be telling me the Holy Spirit beat you up. That's a lie. The Holy Spirit will show you and me that we're wrong, but he ain't going to beat you up. He doesn't condemn. Satan condemns. The Holy Spirit convicts. There's a big difference. Big difference. So we walk in the Spirit. The Spirit of the living God is in you if you expect, accept Jesus Christ. And, um, and we walk by faith. And we walk in the blood of Jesus and we walk by the word of our testimony saying, the Lord's got me and I ain't going nowhere else. I'm sticking to my Lord. And that's all I know. Because he will give you such joy and such strength and such peace that you can never overcome all things in this world. You can overcome it. You can sky high. You can achieve. Yes, there ain't nothing wrong with achieving. You can succeed. There ain't nothing wrong with succeeding. But that's not why we chase Christ. We chase Christ because he's beautiful and he's our savior and we want eternal life with him. But we want to glorify his name today. We 
glorify his name today. Amen. Father God, we're so thankful. Forgive us of our sins. Forgive America. Forgive Australia. Forgive Africa. Forgive Armenia. Forgive Brazil. Forgive Argentina. Forgive Mexico. Forgive us, Lord. Antarctica. South Pole, North Pole. Ukraine, Russia. China, India. Myanmar, oh, Bangladesh. Forgive us, Lord. Middle East, Israel. Uh, Yemen, forgive us. Saudi Arabia, forgive us, Lord. Forgive us, Lord. Around the world, Lord, forgive us, for we have sinned. We have gone astray, everyone to his own way. Forgive us, Lord. Everybody wants money, more money, more money, more money. Everybody wants more fame, more fame, more fame. Everybody wants to achieve and achieve and achieve. And there's nothing wrong with that. But Lord, they've left you out. But we are inviting you back into the United States of America, where you alone can secure our borders, where you alone spilled your blood all over our borders. And Father, where there is terrorists, take them out yourself, Papa, in the name of Jesus Christ. And we, we, we repent, Papa. We repent for bowing our knee to speak in a correct way. We repent, Father. We're going to speak your word in a bold and clear way, but we're going to speak it with love, Lord. And that's how it's going to be from now on. We thank you, Lord. Give us strength to do your work, Lord, and shield us with your Holy Spirit, when the enemy comes in like a flood, whether they're the enemies from within or they're from without, when the enemy comes in like a flood, Lord, yeah, you, Father, you raise up a standard against them and take them down. Take them down. All demonic forces and people being used by demonic forces, stand down. As the blood of Jesus comes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To the Lamb of God. Amen. Woo. Yes. Amen. Well loved ones. I don't know about you. But I just preach myself. Happy. <laughs> and we just had ourselves. Church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. God bless you. God keep you. God shine his face upon you. Blessed be the name of the Lord.